Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at synaptic vesicle fusion. So we're going to start putting the entire story together. So um, before we actually get to synaptic vesicle fusion, I would like to uh, present this as a complete story. So we're going to uh, start off with uh, the synaptic vesicles getting docked at the presynaptic membrane. We're then going to talk about what happens when an action potential arrives in the axon terminal, how that leads to calcium, uh, a calcium signal arriving, how the calcium signal activates synaptotagmin, what synaptotagmin does in order to promote fusion, and then we'll look at what actually happens in fusion. We'll look at the two possibilities, basically, kiss and run fusion or full fusion, and we'll put the whole story together. Right. Okay, so let's begin then. Okay, so let's say uh, this is an axon terminal here. Okay, so this is a picture of an axon terminal. And uh, in the axon terminal, what we will do is we will create synaptic vesicles. So here is a synaptic vesicle. Okay, so it's a vesicle filled with neurotransmitter. Now, what we want to do to this synaptic vesicle is we want to dock it at the presynaptic membrane. So this here, this is the pre synaptic membrane, and it's the membrane which will face onto uh, the next cell, the postsynaptic cell, so the postsynaptic cell maybe will be here. So this might be a dendritic spine of the postsynaptic cell. Okay, so this is the presynaptic membrane. So, in order to get very rapid neurotransmitter uh, release, what we need to have is we need to have uh, synaptic vesicles docked up against the presynaptic membrane like so. So we need vesicles right up here held against this presynaptic membrane. And when uh, the action potential then arrives in the, end, in the axon terminal, what we can do is release these uh, neurotransmitter-filled vesicles very quickly into the synaptic cleft and therefore uh, hopefully get a rapid neurotransmission. Okay, so what we need to study is how do we dock uh, presynaptic, well, synaptic vesicles here. So this is a synaptic vesicle. That's just uh, the name for a vesicle which is fill, filled with neurotransmitters. So this is a synaptic vesicle. Okay, so how do we get synaptic vesicles to dock at the plasma membrane? Then how, when an action potential arrives, do we get them to actually fuse with the presynaptic membrane and release their neurotransmitter contents into this gap between the presynaptic and postsynaptic cell, which is known as the synaptic cleft? Okay, right. So... Uh, let's begin by asking how do we dock our synaptic vesicle at the presynaptic membrane. Okay, so this involves an interaction between proteins in uh, the synaptic vesicle uh, with proteins that are in the plasma membrane. Okay, so if this is our synaptic vesicle here, and here is our plasma membrane here. Right, so our story needs to begin with these proteins known as snare proteins. So I'll tell you what a snare protein is. So snare, uh, S-N-A-R-E, like this, stands for snap receptor. So a snare protein really is any protein which will bind to uh, another protein known as alpha snap. Okay, which isn't really involved in the docking process, but is involved in the recycling of the snare proteins later. So, initially, the snare proteins were discovered because they bound to alpha snap, uh, and that's the origin of their name as snap receptor proteins. Okay, now, there are roughly two types of snare proteins. Well, a crude way of dividing them is uh, as follows. You can divide them into the T-snares, uh, which means the target snares. So let me write this out. So T-snare means target snare. And the target snares are those snare proteins which are associated with the plasma membrane, okay? So with the presynaptic membrane. And the reason they are called target snares is because in the case of uh, vesicle fusion, the 
fusion of a synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is viewed as being the target membrane for the fusion of this synaptic vesicle. So this here is the plasma membrane. Okay. Uh, so that's why uh, the snare proteins which are associated with the plasma membrane are known as the T-snares because they are associated with the target membrane. And then the other type of snare is a V-snare. Okay, and V-snare stands for vesicular snare, and these are the snare proteins which are associated uh, with the membrane of the synaptic vesicle. Okay, so basically in order to dock the synaptic vesicle at the plasma membrane, what we're going to do is we're going to have an interaction between the uh, snare proteins which are in the vesicle, the V-snares, and the snare proteins which are in the plasma membrane, the T-snares. Okay, so let me firstly present the um, snare protein which is in the synaptic vesicle. Okay, so this is a protein known as synaptobrevin 2, and it's coloured in orange here. So this is, this protein here is synaptobrevin 2. Okay, and it has a membrane-spanning alpha helix here, which anchors it in the membrane of the synaptic uh, vesicle. And then it also has this cytoplasmic alpha helix here, which is going to um, take part in the formation of the core snare complex, which we'll see in a moment. Okay, so synaptobrevin 2 is the major snare protein that's in the vesicle, i.e. it's the major V-snare. Now let's look at the T-snares, of which there are two. Okay, so the first one, which I'm going to draw here, and it's going to, I don't know how I'm going to draw this, it's going to have to have its structure continuing on up here, and then it has another portion up here like so. So, uh, this protein, which I'll colour in blue here, going right through the name synaptic cleft there, uh, this protein is supposed to represent syntaxin 1. Okay, so this is syntaxin 1. Right, so syntaxin 1, again, it has a membrane-spanning alpha helix down here, then it has another alpha helix here, okay, which is going to interact with the alpha helix of the synaptobrevin 2. So this portion, this alpha helix of the uh, syntaxin 1 protein that's going to interact with the alpha helix of synaptobrevin 2, this portion is known as the snare motif, okay, and it's going to take part in the formation of the core snare complex, which is going to hold this synaptic vesicle to the plasma membrane. This other portion of syntaxin 1 up here, it's again got three alpha helices here, all uh, folded back on one another like this. So this is what's known as the triple helix. Okay, so triple because there are three of them, and then helices because they are helices. So this is the triple helix up here. Okay, uh, so syntaxin 1 is uh, this, uh, the first example of our T-snare here, which is associated with the plasma membrane. Okay, and by the way, this uh, triple helix, this should be in the cytoplasm. I've just realized that I've drawn it as that it's bending back into the cell membrane. So let me make this more obvious by putting the cell membrane there. So it's in the cytoplasm, basically. Okay, now, uh, the final T-snare is a protein known as SNAP25. And this basically supplies two alpha helices into um, the core snare complex as it's going to become. So here are the two alpha helices, whoops, the two alpha helices of SNAP25 here. And then at the base here, it has a membrane attachment portion. So this here, this is SNAP25. Right, okay, so what's going to happen is that you have these four alpha helices, which are side by side. And what they can do is they can wrap around one another to form a core snare complex, okay? They also have a point where there's going to be an ionic interaction. So how am I going to draw this? So there is a point along these four alpha helices known as the zero ionic layer. So this here is the zero ionic layer. Okay, so this is the zero ionic layer. Okay, and this is the point where you have an ionic interaction between amino acids that are in all four alpha helices uh, 
and this ionic interaction is also going to help uh, hold uh, the four alpha helices together to form this coarse complex. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.